Hello and welcome. My name is Jan, and today I have this distinct joy and honor of introducing to you the Phoenix Motor Spinner. The Phoenix Motor Spinner is a motor spinner meant for the hand spinning of yarn. The big feature I'm showing off right here is the double drive. You can reconfigure it with a brake as a single and it has a traditional tilt tensioning system that should be familiar to most spinners. And from the feature set, let's start off with the flyer. The flyer is balanced for both static and dynamic balance. Both the bobbin and the flyer have been balanced for each of their mass so that their mass balance in relation to each other is is really nice for spinning and talking about the other some of the balance is some of the drive ratios these drive ratios are chosen for small smaller weight yarns and I have surveyed more than 20 plus wheels and in person and looked at probably hundreds of pictures of historical uh, examples and all looking at a, at specifically the drive ratios. I have chosen one pulley for a lighter take up and spinning small singles and another pulley for stronger take up and plying larger singles. The smaller pulley for light take up is pictured here. This makes for a responsive and predictable take up for a spinner. The hooks are spring tempered steel, also known as music wire. The, the flyer shaft is hand machined, polished and finished and it's, it's high speed steel construction will give years and years of very, very tough use. It's got a one quarter inch orifice size and the bobbin capacity is about three to four ounces of finished yarn. It's hand turned hand f and hand assembled. Also notice the skateboard bearings. These skateboard bearings are pretty much maintenance free, need very little cleaning and very little oiling. I have, I have not oiled these once over the, about the past month that I've been using it and putting it through some pretty heavy testing and rugged use. Uh, they also spin very freely and allow a very easy travel for all of the components. It's also powered by a drone motor. A drone motor will is, is very consistent in its torque and its speed output. And paired along with this drone motor are no custom boards or ele electronics. All of these are just standard RC parts glued together on the, and, or not even glued, but uh, just affixed to the back of, of the control board. The next feature is this reduction pulley. This reduction pulley allows for a lot of different drive cord choices. This allows for a natural slip and a much more natural feel that's much more akin to a treadle wheel. And this design is based on a 1803 Amos Minor driven spindle, but done in reverse so that the motor would spin faster and produce more torque on the output shaft for the flyer as opposed for the Amos Minor driven spindle which does the opposite which accumulate uh, spins the driven spindle faster and reduces the torque. All of this is hardwood construction in this case reclaimed maple. I will always purchase either reclaimed or sustainably harvested and locally purchased hardwood for all of these builds. And speaking of building, these are all handmade in California by me, hand balanced and, and hand assembled. Also notice the rubber feet. 
the rubber feet keep it from skittering across the table as it's spinning, although there is very little vibration and very little noise from the, from this, as, as you'll see when we get to spinning with it in some later videos. It weighs under, weighs under 5 kilograms or 10 pounds, and it is a joy to spin on. As I can attest to personally, I've done a lot of spinning with this little machine and it has been just, all I can say is it has challenged me for my spinning, for my spinning skills. And I don't think about the machine and I don't think about the machine or what the, or what the device that is making the yarn or providing the twist is doing. All I'm thinking about is making yarn and putting the correct amount of material in the drafting zone and pinching and doing the correcting drafting techniques to make the yarn that I'm trying to produce. Which brings us to the reasons why for making the Phoenix in, a first, in the first place. Why would you make a motor spinner when so many are available? It goes back to one of the main features of the cotton drive cord. It'll make it, this feels more like a treadle wheel. And with the added benefit of just being able to turn on and go, the double drive allows for much less adjustment during its spinning. And once you get it adjusted the first time, it's just a mild, consistent take up so that you can focus on drafting. And there's little or no adjustment that happen. I do. I really don't adjust it as the bobbin fills. I don't need to. And that lets me focus on drafting and yarn production of yarn and in addition this opens up a wider range of fiber choices i'm able to spin flax cotton alpaca and a wider range of fibers that i think would be possible on on the contemporary motor spinners available today it is designed as a production wheel it's also easily transportable i've taken it camping to sheep to shawl and then just going outside when it's nice. It's, it's very efficient and a power sipper. It can be spun on a battery. I have a Jackery 160 that can run it for over eight hours with no problem. And s some of the other things that go along with this are, you know, I will support this with a lifetime warranty. I believe that this will bring hours and lifetimes of very fun spinning use because really the important parts are overbuilt. Also, if you are trying to spin, there will be no voided warranties with this. You can hack away with this. Its design allows for hackability. If you want to try a different drive cord, a different braking material besides, besides fishing line, if you want to try a, even a different motor or a different set of electronics, I will not I, I will continue to support this with its lifetime warranty, and I want everyone to feel like not only that, that they can use this tool, but that they, they can modify and, f and, and accommodate the different uh, the needs of their spinning by modifying their tool. You'll, you'll also be supporting a family-run business. This is, my, this is my first attempt at a family-run business, and every customer I want to I feel that they're supported by all of the knowledge and all of the support that I could give them in supporting one of the product in something that I really love to use myself. And you can continue a second generation of wheel making. Alden Amos, my stepdad, made wheels for most of his uh, for most of his life, and I'd like to continue in being able to make available the kind of quality that he would like to that would that would he would be proud of and i think that this is something that, that is that it's a lot of fun to spin on and it goes for hours at a time without a prop with no problems and it's every good as a motor spinner as i've ever spun on so with that we'll go into other questions how long will it take to fulfill an order my goal is two weeks from order confirmation to your spinner being shipped. If you have more constraints, more, if you have other time constraints, please let me know and I can try to, to make accommodations for that. 
why not a Kickstarter or GoFundMe? And my answer to that is, I can already make a website and I have a bank account to transit to do my own transactions and 15% for those services is much too steep. Next question is automation and CNC. I would love to do that when the time comes. It's a lot of change up from the hand tooling that I've done, spun up now. I'd love to lower the cost and produce more units until then each one will be handmade and hand finished. Next questions is how much is it? It's quite expensive and it will be 2200 US dollars plus tax and it will include free shipping though. Why so expensive? There's a lot of very small details that take quite a lot of time with this build. I really wish it didn't cost so much and as I continue on making these, I will absolutely be working to lower cost while maintaining quality. That's going to take a calculated level of demand to keep up with. And until demand significantly raises and I can significantly change my manufacturing processes, it's going to be this expensive and I will be working to lower those costs, but for right now, it's a significant investment of time for me to put each one of these together, as well as a few hundred dollars of materials. But in to round out the answer to that question, good tools are always worth it. And it's always better, in my estimation, that if you know that you're gonna be using this tool a lot, it's better just to buy once and cry once. So with that, we're closing out this video and an introduction to the Phoenix Motor Spinner. Thank you for joining us and tune in as we sp do more spinning, do more discussion of the history of, uh, of spinning. Thanks again and keep treadling.